Singe. Ouch. I have been singed. Um, great video, Singe. Uh, I think fair critique. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, uh, I, I apologize if I um, offended or if you found it offensive. You know, I... Uh, Here's the thing. I was thinking of the, the atheist community against the backdrop of a religious brotherhood, uh, and in particular the Islamic Ummah, you know. Um, <clears throat> and I do think we abuse the word community. Uh, so that's, that contrast accounts for my, uh, you know, the strength of my my. Uh, yeah, I was a little too cynical. I, yeah, I was a little too cynical, but I apologize for that. Um, but, you know, my point is, is still valid. You would brought up the example of um, vote botting and people needing support, uh, atheists needing support. But, you see, this galvanization of uh, into a community, I'll say, this galvanization into a loosely knit community is caused by an external force. It's caused by the oppression and the attacks you know, in the absence of that oppression, in the absence of those attacks, if, uh, for instance, all of a sudden no one were uh, attacking atheists, you know, wouldn't those bonds dissolve and people sort of tend to go their own way? Maybe a few relationships would, individual relationships would sustain. But uh, so it, it basically goes back to my point that there is not a positive thing of substance at the core of that community. Uh, if if we want to call it a community, so that's basically uh, basically what I'm saying there. Um, atheism as a doorway out of delusion, you know, I think that's a belief singe that atheism is not a delusion, and that various religious beliefs are delusion. I think that's a belief. Um, I prefer to keep an open mind on that on that stuff, you know. Uh, the beliefs are dangerous. I had a great uh, comment conversation with Sandform, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll come back to this in a little while when I talk about the call to responsibility um, among atheists. Um, a lot of people, I don't know how many people, I say a lot, I don't know how many people, but some people are barely hanging in there, you know, and their their faith is what is holding them together. So I am Part of my video was really a call to responsibility among my fellow atheists, you know, to uh, to be aware of this, you know. And if you end up shattering someone's faith, you have a responsibility towards that person. Um, if you just take away something that they need, you know, um, you know, you can't just abandon them to the abyss. I mean, welcome to, uh, you know, welcome to the possibility that uh, your life may not continue. Welcome to the possibility that uh, it may be an unjust world. Welcome to the possibility that there may be no objective, external, overarching meaning to your life, and that you may now be in the position of having to find meaning on your own or create meaning on your own. Um, or, or study the universe for meaning, or whatever, what have you. But you, you really are, we really are in that situation presenting people with the abyss. And I, so I don't think we should wantonly attack people's faith. That's basically uh, what I was saying. Now with Sandform, I had a conversation, um, and I was saying, you know, you have you have two mature consenting adults, and they want to debate about religion and debate about whether or not God exists. That's fine. And in those kind of situations, you're not going to run in this. But when people make videos that just lash out and attack faith, there are going to be people viewing these videos who, you know, who, um, who, uh, are, are, are hanging on to their faith, man, you know, uh, that's all. You remove someone's faith, it can be a terrible, terrible thing, you know, but I agree with you too that it's, it's not often, you know, usually these are gradual processes, it's not like one conversation is going to, um, is going to undo someone's faith, but I'm not really talking about conversation. I'm talking about some pretty powerful videos uh, that are just uh, attacks, you know, attacks on uh, religious faith to people who are in a fragile part, I think, of whatever their religious belief is, that they're maybe in a very vulnerable, fra fragile um, stage, you know. Um, that's what I'm saying. Um, uh, I got some notes, man. Yeah. Hey, good example about um, the surgeon removing cancer. And, um, 
you know, replacing, you know, not replacing it with something, you know, because I was saying if you remove somebody's faith, what are you going to replace it with? And, and your parallel was, well, when a surgeon removes a, a cancerous tumor, what does he replace it with? He doesn't need to replace it with something. Um, uh, so it's a good example, but I don't think it's completely apl applicable to this situation because, you know, if you remove uh, a cancerous tumor for some, from somebody, it's not going to risk their, uh, they're not going to decompensate psychologically. There's no risk of decompensating psychologically. And we know that a tumor is bad, you know, um, and, uh, you know, there's plenty of evidence that tumors are bad. But when it comes to whether or not gods exist or a particular god exists, most of this is beyond evidence. Um, you pointed out that attributes attributed to certain gods are completely contradictory. Um, I come back to the core question, which is actually the question I asked myself when I was about 13 years old, which, which moved me from strong atheism to weak atheism. And that question was, what if um, logic and mathematics, what if these are created? What if these are part of creation, part of the created universe? Because if that's true, then the creating deity would stand not only outside of time and not only outside of space, but outside of the laws of logic. <clears throat> now, I realize that has, has lots of um, strange complications, but... Um, it could be true. I mean, logic could be just the rules by which this universe functions, functions, you know. Um, uh, so it's a legitimate question is all I'm saying. And, and it's the legitimacy of the question that caused me to move towards basically weak atheism and keeping an open mind on all these topics because who knows? It could be. Uh, it's a disturbing question. It disturbs me. It always has disturbed me since I first thought of it. But just out of intellectual integrity, I couldn't ignore the question. I had to embrace that question, you know, and live with it. Um, just like I have to live with, uh, you know, other aspects of my atheism. Um, so that's the story, man. Uh, in any event, yeah, thanks for the video. I know I, I, I came off cynical and... Uh, I did not mean to uh, totally invalidate all bonds that exist between atheists and the support that atheists give each other. I know, I, you know, I know that. I mean, I've received support from other atheists too, so I don't appear to be ungrateful either, you know. Um, and I've given support to people. I know what it feels like, but I, but I, um, but I have to stay. I say I still come back to that those bonds that not being based on its own independent. Uh, substance, for lack of a better word, but in this case being the result of an outside negative force uh, and its response to that. You oppress any group, you're going to galvanize it into uh, some sort of community. Um, that's a story singe. Great video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.